So now let's turn our attention to the supply side of the economy. So we've just finished talking about the aggregate demand curve. Now we can talk about uh, the supply side. So what we're going to talk about is the aggregate supply curve. So this is the supply curve for the entire economy. So the AS curve or the aggregate supply curve is going to relate the price level, so P or the price level, to the quantity of output that firms would like to produce and sell at that price level. So this curve is going to be drawn given some set of tech, some set of uh, factor prices as well as some level of technology. So either of those Either of those things, either technology or factor prices, if they change, it's going to need to shift this aggregate supply curve around. Since as of now, it's drawn for a given level of technology and a given le level of uh, factor prices. So factor prices are like input prices. So think of the price of labor. I mean, the price of oil is obviously a big one in lots of manufacturing. So these are kind of factors used in production. So as units uh, as unit costs rise with output, so we've kind of learned that you know at a certain point uh, costs are going up, the marginal cost curve is increasing. So unit costs are going up with output. Firms are going to produce only if the price increases. So this gives us a relationship between what firms are willing to produce and sell as well as the price level. So it's upward sloping, just like the supply curve we saw in microeconomics. So not only is this AS curve upward sloping, its slope is actually increasing as we produce more output. So it's getting steeper and steeper as we move to the right of our uh, real GDP on our x-axis there, which we'll see in just a second. So when output is low, so the reason for this is when output's low, firms typically have excess capacity. So they could produce more without it costing more to produce more, in the sense that the per unit costs aren't going up to produce more. But all of a sudden, when we get around our potential output, which we're gonna, which we've been calling Y star, if we want to start producing more, we have to raise the prices, or firms are raising the prices in order to produce more. So when we're low levels of production, firms can typically increase their production without increasing their prices very much. So the AS curve would be the aggregate supply curve is relatively flat there. But as we increase our production, we're producing more and more, it's going to get more and more expensive to produce those goods. So the AS curve is going to get steeper and steeper. So let's see what this uh, supply aggregate supply curve looks like and see what happens when there's uh, changes to one of uh, those two factors. So either level of technology or set of factor prices and how it changes. So this idea of uh, a shock to the aggregate supply curve. So this is the slide we're going to be working on. We're just going to talk our way through it using a whiteboard. All right, so let's make sure we have a black pen. So again, now we're moving to this um, model where we have the price level on the y-axis and real y on the x-axis. So we did this when we drew out our aggregate demand curve. Now we're going to draw out our aggregate supply curve. And so again, on low levels of production, we have a relatively flat, but as the levels of as real, EG, yeah, as real GDP increases, so as you move this way, the slope of this AS curve is getting steeper and steeper. So let's think about uh, what we mean when we say an aggregate supply shock. So shock is just some exogenous change into the system. So let's imagine, so remember, we, we're drawing this aggregate supply curve, assuming some level of technology and some level of um, factor prices, some level of factor prices. So let's say um, prices of inputs decreases, or technology increases. So price of, that's what we're seeing right now, the price of oil is really low. That's an input, a uh, major input, a lot of production. So let's say the price of oil is going low or all of a sudden we have this increase in technology. What would happen? What we're gonna see is a, a rightward shift of this aggregate supply curve. So given some price level, so let's just imagine these prices at some price level P0, we have some rightward shift of the AS curve. So at every possible price level, now firms are willing to supply more for that same price level. And this is going to be the result of price uh, price of inputs decreasing or technology increasing. 
We could also think of prices of inputs increasing, so it becomes more expensive to produce. Or we can think of tech decreasing, so maybe there's a natural disaster or something like that, where all of a sudden this technology we've used in production just isn't possible anymore. Well, what's going to happen is we're going to have this rightward shift in the AS curve. So price of inputs and technology is going to be what's shifting this AS curve to the left or to the right. And its direction depends on whether the price of inputs is going up or down or whether technology is improving or in some strange way decreasing in some way. So now let's bring these two ideas. We talked about aggregate demand curves, and we just figure uh, we just finished talking about aggregate supply curves. Let's bring these together to talk about equilibrium. So let's just bring a whiteboard together. And again, now we're just putting together these two ideas. So we have this big axis now. We have the price level up here, which a lot of times are just represented by P. We have real output or real GDP on the x-axis. So remember we had this downward sloping aggregate demand curve, which we derived using the AE curve. And we had this upward sloping, and it's going to get steeper and steeper as we move to the right, aggregate supply curve, which shows how much the producers are willing to produce given a certain price level. Well, where are those two, two things cross? There's two functions cross, the supply and demand. We have our equilibrium level uh, of prices as well as our equilibrium level of real GDP. So this is what equilibrium looks like in this macro model now. It's a price level and it's a real GDP or real output, which we're denoting P for price level and Y for uh, real output. So now that we've discussed equilibrium, we can think about changes to equilibrium. So uh, we can have demand shocks. So that's the AD curve shifting to the right or left. We're going to call it expansionary if it's a rightward shift and that it's increasing real y. Or it can be contractionary in that it's a leftward shift of this aggregate demand curve, uh, and that's going to decrease real y. We could have the same thing for supply uh, shocks. They can be expansionary or contractionary, and whether they're expansionary or contractionary relates to the direction of, these, of this AS curve. There are expansionary supply shocks if they shift to the right, such as if there's a technology improvement or the price of inputs went down, that's an expansionary aggregate supply shock. Or they can be contractionary. So if the price of inputs went up, so if the price of oil goes up, there's a leftward shift in the AS curve. And we say it's a contractionary shift in the AS curve or aggregate supply curve. So we can think about how to draw these out. So let's just go back to the Y curve. Uh, the, the whiteboard here, and we can think of AD curve shifts. So if there was some uh, change in anything in the aggregate demand curve, so we got to go back to our AE curve now. So a change in C, or a change in I, or a change in G, or a change in uh, NX. And if these were positive changes, positive, maybe I'll just put a plus beside it, positive mm -hmm. changes in these things. And maybe you can hear Tully whining in the background. What that's going to do is it's going to shift this whole AD curve to the right. And again, the size of this rightward shift is the simple multiplier times that change in A. And just like before, we're going to see this new equilibrium where the new aggregate demand curve crosses the old um, aggregate supply curve. And that's going to have a pr higher price level and a higher Y. So here, just like in microeconomics, an increase in demand, or in this case, a rightward shift to the aggregate demand curve, has upward pressure in price levels and upward pressure in real GDP. So if we want to get an idea of kind of what's happening behind the scenes on this shift to the right and then slowly moving up this curve, we can uh, take a look at the next slide. So let's just take a look at that. So this is the mechanics of what's going on behind the scenes there. So we had the same kind of shift in this bottom right panel. 
and that's a rightward shift in the aggregate demand curve. So the first thing that's happening, that rightward shift that we're seeing down here, is from that change in A in anything in that AE function. So for instance, a change in autonomous consumption or a change in investment or government purchases, that's causing this AE curve first to shift out to the right. And we're at that Y prime one. But at that price level, we see that the quantity supplied or willingness to supply for the aggregate supply curve is less than the aggregate demand. So that's putting upward pressure on prices. And so that's why we have this second thing happening, which is this upward pressure on prices. And so as this pressure on prices, uh, as the prices go up, if we remember what's happening when we derive the AD curve, that's like a downward shift. So as the price level goes up, remember exports go down, as well as uh, wealth goes down, which means autonomous consumption goes down. So that's why we're moving along this AD curve. So the change, the shift is due to some change in A, and then the changing price level is causing us to move along this new AD curve until we're at this new equilibrium where they intercept. So that's what's the mechanics in terms of what's happening behind the scenes here. Now remember we said that the slope of the AS curve was getting uh, larger and larger the more we move to the right. So you know it's relatively flat over here but it was getting steeper and steeper as we move to the right. Well that means these aggregate demand shocks are going to have a smaller um, and smaller effect on Y or real GDP and a larger and larger effect on price level as we uh, as we shift this AD curve further and further to the right. So notice down here, if the AD curve went from 80, 0 to 81, so it's a rightward shift, we saw only a small change in price level and a really large, sorry about that, a large change in Y. But as we move up here and we're going to from 84 to 85, notice that a rightward shift in the AD curve is only causing a really small change in Y now but a huge change, a relatively huge change in the price level. So this is just a result of this uh, aggregate supply curve getting steeper and steeper. So let's start talking about aggregate supply curve, uh, aggregate supply shocks or shifts. And so it's gonna work the exact same way in the sense that, uh, exact same way as we did in micro, in the sense that here, let's imagine we have a negative aggregate supply shock. So something like price of inputs goes up, uh, wages go up, there's some decrease in technology from some natural disaster or something, and so we have this leftward shift of the AS curve. So just like um, in micro, this is gonna cause the price level to go up, and output to go down. So that's what's happening. We're just shifting this AS curve to the left and finding the new equilibrium where the new AS curve crosses the old aggregate demand curve. If you want to understand what's happening on the AE side of this, so the demand side of the economy, which is the aggregate expenditure side of the economy, what we're, what's happening is we're increasing the price level which is causing a movement along the AD curve, right? So that's why we're moving from E0 to E1. It's that the price level uh, is going up due to this shift in the AS curve. Going from E0 to E1 prime, the amount willing to be supplied is less than demand. We see this upward pressure on prices as prices go up. Uh, wealth goes down, exports go down, which causes a movement along this AD curve till we get to this E1. So that's how uh, aggregate supply shocks work. But remember that usually in the real world, as we saw and we talked about in microeconomics, a lot of times we're, a lot of these things are happening all at once. We have aggregate demand curves, aggregate supply curves all at once. And so it's you know not as clear in terms of you know what's happening or the overall effect of these uh, constant shocks. So right now, for instance, maybe we have a supply shock from the supply chain in China being interrupted from COVID and things like that. And now we're getting this big aggregate demand uh, shock as we all kind of stay inside, no one's buying anything. Um, so maybe this is a, a fall in demand, so this aggregate demand shock. So they're both kind of happening at once. 
And so just like in micro, when they both two things are happening at once or multiple things are happening at once, we might be able to tell the, you know, which way each of the curves moves, but the overall effect might be a bit ambiguous. So again, this is when maybe algebra is going to be a nicer way of finding out exactly what happened. So that's the end of uh, this chapter. And so what we learn in this chapter is we kind of started to vary the prices and thought about this relationship between the price level and real GDP and use the AE curve to derive this aggregate demand curve. We talked about how shifts in the aggregate demand curve are related to shifts in the AE curve. We talked about the size of the shift of the AD uh, curve is related to the size of the simple multiplier. We then uh, introduced this concept of the aggregate supply curve. We talked about why it was upward sloping. We talked about it, that it got steeper the higher the output. And then we talked about changes in, we talked about equilibrium, so where AS and AD cross, and that's macroeconomic equilibrium. And we talked about changes to equilibrium from shifts in the aggregate demand to the aggregate supply curve. We talked about the mechanics of kind of what's happening in that AE um, model behind the scenes. So the AE model, think of that as the demand side of the economy. So now what we're going to do going forward is start to, and next week is we're going to think about is uh, going from the short run equilibrium and thinking about this long run. And that's going to help us think about business cycles. So you know, we have this anchor, which is end up going to be potential output, and we're going to kind of be shifting and um, going around this potential output.